Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Pierre, that is Tim, and Merry freaking Christmas, you filthy animals, because it's coming up to Christmas, which means we'll do a, a, a Christmas themed horror movie again. Mm hmm. <laughs> you sound so disappointed. I am disappointed. <laughs> Why wouldn't I be disappointed? <laughs> a little, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, humbug person. <laughs> a humbug? <laughs> Is that what you're going yeah. for? Okay. Uh, so yes, you know, horror movies. On, the, on this episode, we are talking mm -hmm. about a new Christmas film. Yeah, last week mm -hmm. we did a classic. This week we're doing a, a, a new entry. We're doing All the mm -hmm. Creatures Were Stirring, which I believe you can find on the Shudders, uh, mm -hmm. if you have access to Shudder. Uh, is that, I actually didn't know what this was about. Tim just said that this mm -hmm. exists, and I said, sure, we'll do the new one that you've heard of. <laughs> And it turned out to be an anthology movie, which I didn't know before I started watching it. I literally just, uh, I started watching it and then I got, wait, is this an anthology? And then it went into a story after the sort of the, the, the wraparound yeah. started. And I was like, ah, it's an anthology. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so normally we do a spoiler free section. We're not going to really do that that much on this one because with anthologies, it's difficult to do it for each episode or each story. Mm -hmm. We kind of just have to get, okay. we'll give our overall thoughts spoiler free and then we're just going to have to go into spoilers to talk about each one. So okay. that's what but the, the the premise of this in terms of the wraparound is that uh, a guy and a girl on Christmas Eve are going on a weird date because they're both alone on Christmas. So they mm -hmm. figured they'd be alone together, and the only thing they could go to, and first of all, I'm calling bullshit. No movie theaters were opening Christmas Eve. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> but they go to this kind of like little little theater uh, that does like mm -hmm. a indie independent like performance arts, mm -hmm. and they're seeing a Christmas themed show on christmas eve it's a tiny little theater as well that was one of the first things i noticed was like this this has like maybe 30 seats in it this little theater mm -hmm. uh well to be fair though that's um not that uncommon uh oh, my... I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that i just yeah. like when they walked in i was like man this is like it's smaller than anything mm -hmm. i've ever been in for sure oh sure well i i used to live on uh in my old apartment uh back in la which just takes place in you, los you angeles did, you did used to live in your old apartment that is true i can confirm yeah. this well, jeez, uh, let me finish the sentence, please. <laughs> you did that I'm get, to me. I'm getting somewhere. Tim, you did that to me in one of the things we recorded last week, so I'm just getting you back. <laughs> All right, that's fair. You get one. Uh, but no, I used to live on like the, um, I don't know if you'd call it like theater row, but there was there's like a lot of <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's a lot of like very small independent theaters near me, and mm. it, it would they'd typically be about this size. You know, people would do like a lot of kind of you know, like a DIY stand-up shows or small kind of, you know, indie stuff like this. So I, yeah, it is definitely kind of like weird. It's very small and intimate, but you know, there's like a lot of places like this that I've uh, been around. I'd feel really self-conscious because like, it, when it's a sea of audience members, they can't really see anyone individually. But when there's oh, sure. like 30 yeah. of you in there, I feel like if I react at all to what they're doing, mm -hmm. especially negatively, they're going to notice. They're going to see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, it's, it's, it's awkward. But anyway, so basically they, they, they act out the little performances, but when the performances start, it obviously cuts to the actual story. Uh, this film is a little short movie, and we get... Uh, was it five or six? Um, unfortunately, uh, so Wiki neither Wikipedia... In fact, Wikipedia <laughs> does not even have a page for this movie, uh, and IMDb does not have a list of the titles of the of the stories, so we're just going to be going from, from memory and describing yeah. them, but... Um, I think there's about six of them, which given yes. it's only an 80 minute movie, is, that means they're quite short. Yeah, they're usually pretty short. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that that is the gist of it. So, uh, Tevi, did you enjoy yeah. all the creatures were stirring? Uh, so I, I was actually pretty excited for this. Uh, you know, I, I do love Christmas horror movies, and I, I really like anthology movies. And uh, I'm assuming you don't listen to this, but uh, I. Recently, the last couple of months, started listening to the horror podcast Shockwaves, uh, which is actually like the the Blumhouse horror uh, podcast. And uh, okay. one of the hosts, um, one of the hosts on it is uh, Rebecca McKendry, who is one of the directors uh, on the movie. It was a uh, her and her husband, I believe, uh, directed. Yeah, the whole it, was thing. A, it, was a, it was a pair who did the whole thing. Um, yeah, Rebecca yes. and David McKendry, David I believe. Yeah, David Ian McKendry. Yeah. And so, uh, like, obviously, I, I don't know her personally, but, you know, you listen to podcasts a lot and you kind of get a feel for the host. And I was like, oh, like, I like this person, so I'm excited to see their movie. So, <laughs> like, I don't want to be 
<laughs> it, uh, it's hard because I don't want to be too negative, but honestly, I yeah. did not think the movie was very good. It's uh, it, it's it's definitely a, a like a low budget production, and I feel like it shows. And it, it's not like that's necessarily a bad thing. Like some of our favorite you know horror movies, like you know especially like stuff from the eighties that you know was on has hmm. been on like a shoestring budget. Uh, but this is one of those examples though where it's like really obvious. Like everything just feels like you know a little less than you know, what you're kind of used to seeing with movies, I, I think in terms of like, you know, directing and like some of the takes and like acting, it always seems like there's kind of like, uh, like a little extra beat, like in between like a lot of lines and scenes mm. that just makes it feel like, it okay, feel yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it's like a, a little more amateurish. Uh, and uh, like, I would, I will say, I guess the positive thing I have is some of the stories I thought had like good ideas. Uh, there's one in particular that I was like, Oh, actually, actually, I would say there was two stories where I was like, oh, I really like the premise of this a lot, but I just don't think it was executed very I, well. I concur with that. There was one or two that I like the premise of, but ultimately I thought yeah. the execution was very lacking. Um, yeah. And it, to be fair, it's definitely not the worst thing I've seen in the world, but I, but yeah, it's definitely not good, unfortunately. Well, we know that, time because we've, we've talked yeah. about the Bye Bye Man <laughs> and It Watches oh, and, of course, yeah. and a few other examples on this show. Uh, yeah, I would gladly take those any day. Uh, and, and actually, uh, and I will say, there's a couple of, of notable people in here, so that, that was nice to see. Yeah, well, Constance Wu, I assume she did this before she she got bigger this year. That Yeah, that's what I yeah. assumed as well. Because she's in one of the stories and, towards the end. Yeah. yeah. And then in, in the first story, uh, actually, an actress that I like a lot that I you know very seldom get to see, the, uh, the main girl from House of the Devil, uh, I forget what uh, her name is. Begins with like a J or something. But. If I'd seen House of the, oh wait, no, I have seen House of the Devil. I'm thinking, I'm thinking yeah. of House of the Dead. I was thinking of a ball movie. I'm like, I've, oh no, I've no, not no. seen that. Oh, thankfully, no. um, dear God, no. But yeah, she was one of the in like the Office Christmas. Oh, did party she have one. the? Did she have the fringe? Was that her with the fringe? It was. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 So and then <laughs> I think she's I think she's a great actress. Like I love House of the Devil, and uh, I don't really see her in much. So it was nice to see her in it as well. Yeah. Um. You know, I never even recognized her. It's, it's been she, she looks a little bit different, of course. It's been about you know yeah. ten years between the movies, but uh, mm-hmm. now you've said it, I can actually kind of see it. Uh, now that I've reminded yeah. myself what she looks like, but um, yeah. So I, I had, I think like, I like the idea of the first story, and then the ending of that story was really awkward and disappointing. And mm-hmm. then I thought the story, like the ideas, like the last one has a pretty good idea as well. But I thought like. Everything in between the first and the last one, to varying degrees, just kind of bugged me on a conceptual level. To the point where one yeah. or two of them I felt like were, like, did you even think about an idea for this one? You just kind of did something and just did it. <laughs> yeah, and they, they don't get explained very well, which yeah. obviously, especially in anthology movies, it's not like everything needs to have, like, uh, you know, a nice tight little bow around it. But, yeah, there was, like, almost every one I, I at least had some you know varying degree of questions about yeah, what just happened i think was fine with the last one the first one last one felt like it was supposed to be a little ambiguous but you mean the wraparound no no the last one uh the last story oh, okay oh, uh, okay okay but the a lot of the ones in the middle where i, I genuinely finished and went what was the point of that yeah <laughs> like what, what was the purpose of that little story <laughs> i'm not even yeah. sure uh what the purpose of this one with the the, the deer i'll just say that just before we get to Spoilers. Like, what was the point of that one? I'm not sure. Uh, so maybe Tim will enlighten me when we get to that. But so uh, we'll get into that one. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't say I really recommend it. It, it kind of reminded me of uh, not not in terms of plot or tone or or what even's exactly wrong with it. But you know how like we were really looking forward to Slice because all of this fun oh, little sure. indie horror movie, and then yeah. everything about it just didn't quite work. It reminds me how yeah. I felt about that where. I like some of the ideas in this, but ultimately none of it really works for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like even stuff with like all of the like actors and stuff in it, like I, I thought for the most part were pretty fine. Like I, I didn't think anyone was like, you know, terribly bad or anything. But yeah, for again, the most it part, just... there was one or two. I thought there was one guy in the first story who I thought was a, just a little bit off in his delivery with yeah. almost every line of dialogue. But yeah. yeah. But, the, but there's just something about it where it's like, I, I feel like, uh and i think this is more more in the filmmaking but like people would say lines and it felt more like you know uh, instead of people having natural interaction it felt like someone being like 
I said my line. All right, gonna wait a beat. All right, then they're gonna do their line. All right, and then they're kind of gonna wait, and then they're gonna do their line, and then, yeah, you know, and especially like with the joke stuff, I, I felt like that, uh, like really felt uh, uh, apparent, like you know, especially in yeah, kind of like the. I'm going to break out a phrase here that I don't, I, I, I don't break out lately because it's it is quite insulting, but okay, it feels kind of like a student movie in places. The the way the the pacing works. Yeah, no, I, I actually I get that a hundred percent. Uh it's yeah, that that's a that's a good way to put it. Uh, and, and I say this as someone who's made student movies and would say it about their own student movies, right? Oh yeah. It's a it's a yeah. learning curve, but and, it, it's there. And to be fair, this might be I, I don't know, I I'm assuming it's probably their first attempt at like a like a feature length that's movie. Fine. I, I, I I'll click I've, on the name. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like maybe they might have done like shorts and stuff before. Uh, I will specifically go to director. Yeah, they've done they've done two shorts and a TV movie. At least, well, at least okay. uh, Ian David Ian has. Uh, yeah. I assume she'll be similar, if not. Uh, yeah, and like I know, like from listening to the podcast and stuff, she is super smart about movies. I think she teaches like a cl- uh, classes somewhere, and she's written a lot about them, so she definitely knows horror movies uh, for sure. But yeah, maybe... Rebecca's got a few more shorts, but no other. Okay. Yeah, this is for both of them. This is their first feature length movie. Okay, so yeah, maybe there are some like learning curves and stuff. Like, so, I, I, I think wonder, they... I wonder if that's just an example then of like, because you're saying you listen to her talk a lot, you, yeah. you you find her to be knowledgeable on movie making and stuff. I wonder if this is an example of no matter how good you otherwise are, making movies is actually still really bloody hard. And just because you understand oh, the theory doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to translate to actually being able to do it. Yeah, and also, and I I guess this isn't always the case, but sometimes I feel like the bigger a fan of something someone is, the worse mm. the uh, effort ends up being. Like, you know, because I feel like a lot of times you'll you'll hear someone, uh, like, they'll be like a, a really bad movie, but then you hear, like, someone talking about it, and, you know, they're like, oh, wow, this guy likes all the same stuff I do, and they have the same influences, but then, yeah, it just, I don't know, maybe they're too, uh, <laughs> you know, influenced by it or something that it doesn't always work. I'll I'll critique that to a point and say that I don't think the people who make good movies that we like hate all the things we like otherwise oh, like. Fair. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say what it is is that the people who don't tend to be that great tend to rely on talking about everything else they love a lot to try and sell the fact that the the movie will be appealing to everyone else. That's true. Whereas yeah. the people who are just good at it don't necessarily find themselves having to explain themselves that much because the, the yeah. movie's just good and. I, I, I like say it's difficult. You feel like it's well intentioned. You feel like there's people behind this who who like horror movies, who like doing Christmas anthologies and stuff like that, and want to make good little stories. But ultimately, every single one left me kind of underwhelmed uh, or or outright yeah. bored, like depending on which one it was. Fair, yeah. So yeah, so I will go ahead and spoilers, and we'll start working through the stories. Uh, so we said the setup was you know these this guy and a girl on a date. Um, it's a little bit awkward. I mean, honestly, the best thing about the movie might have been the fact that this genuinely felt kind of like this awkward thing. Although, they never actually explain why either of them are alone in Christmas. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, they don't really go into much detail. Yeah. And I, I, I'll See, be... If they said there were like college students who like everyone else went home for Christmas, but they couldn't for some reason, so they were kind of lumped as the two off, you know, outcasts who were left behind... And I'm like, okay, yeah. sure, fine. Because neither of them seem that weird. He seems a little bit dorky, but not someone who would be like, you know, without friends or family. <laughs> yeah, if I'm being 100% honest, I really hated this wraparound. Like, I, oh, I kind of sure. <laughs> hated everything about it. I, I didn't think the two characters were that compelling. Like, yeah, the guy is oh, really I agree, awkward. yeah. No, the, no, the only thing awkward, I like about it like, is that it genuinely feels like awkward between them sure yeah right if it, like that feels believable <laughs> but there is but i yeah, that's totally fair but it's not like an interesting or charming kind of awkward to watch like you know like a, a lot of times I'll, I'll like kind of the losery geeky character in a movie but you know there's like a, a michael sarah kind of charming that i like and then there's like this guy that's just like hey yeah this it's just a little more painful to watch yeah and then like i don't know like the jokes didn't really land for me like the the lady at the uh, concession stand that just like you know oh is, is so bothered and put upon and stuff like you yeah. know that just that, that, that just that's, felt like a really forced. Joke. That's the stuff that reminds me of Splice, where or yeah. Splice, sorry Slice, 
Uh, Splice is a different movie. <laughs> we're not Splice. Uh, oh, we're... Dude, if there's stuff that's reminding you of Splice, it's... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, it's just that, the humour not landing kind of reminds me of that. Uh, but they go yeah. on the sit down, and they're kind of snickering because they're not sure what they're in for. And then the first story is set in, a, in an office building. It is the Christmas sort of... This, I don't know what they do. They never really tell us what they do in this office building, but... I thought the, it was like a chemical company or something. It had like some name like that, like Chemco or something. I'll take your word for it. I never noticed, but nope. I'll take your word for it. But uh, they, they're they basically forced to go to this, this Christmas get-together that one of the, the employees likes to throw. And they, they put all the presents on the table and someone takes something and they, they do this. The only reason why I've ever even heard of this is because of that episode of The Office where Michael decides to like initiate Yankee Swap, where mm-hmm. they, they take, like they, they, they can bag the presents from other people. Mm-hmm. But basically, someone opens a present, uh, and they, they, that's theirs. But if someone else opens a present, they have a choice to steal someone else's present that's already been opened. Um, yeah. As someone who's worked in offices, I can confirm that a lot of offices actually do this. Really? <laughs> we just had our yeah, we yeah. just had our office Christmas party on Friday, and they did that. I did not participate, of course, because I don't know what the hell to buy yeah. uh, the people I work with, but... Yeah, a lot of people uh, seem to like that. So, what well, once you've stolen a present though, is that that locked off? Like no one else can steal that particular one, or well, uh, like other people have, like some people have specific rules. Uh, I think usually uh, it'll be like uh, either maybe an item can only get stolen once or twice, or maybe you you only have the option to steal once. Uh, so there usually be something like that in place. It just feels mean spirited to me because like. What if you? What if you're one the one who brought the shitty present and no one's wanting to steal it? Yeah, um, that that's why I don't like to participate in yeah. that. It's not. It's not so much like uh, that. I would be worried about, you know, uh, you know, people not liking my present or anything. But I don't want to offend someone by being like, oh, I don't want this present, but I want this this person's, and then yeah, like I don't want the person <laughs> that brought like a present that I'm like throwing away or whatever to feel like bad about it. Yeah, yeah, just. It's a weird, weird uh, circumstance to be, but anyway. So, so the one douchey guy opens what's like a Jack in a Box style present, and I'll mm-hmm. give the movie credit. This genuinely surprised me because this, this quickly escalates. <laughs> where he opens this Jack in the Box, and there's, there's like a gunshot inside of it that you know shoots him right in the head, and he he dies. And everyone's like, oh, he's freaking out. Everyone's going oh shit. And I was like, oh. And then they get a phone call from whoever's doing this, and they're like, okay, we're going to play a game. Each of you's going to have to open a present one by one. If you don't try, if you don't play the game, I'm going to gash you and you're going to die. So, and I was like, oh, I like this concept. I, this is a fun little short story concept where there's like a pile of presents and some of them have got traps, some of them have got weapons in them that they might want to use themselves. And that's cool. Unfortunately, the, the longer this went on, the, the more it, it just lost me. <laughs> well, it doesn't really like live up to the pre- uh, to the premise. Uh, yeah. I almost said live, live up to the present, <laughs> which is funny. Uh, but the oh, hilarious. All... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a hearty <laughs> laugh for me for that one, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes when people don't laugh you have to tell them it's funny <laughs> so uh but the first of all the the big complaint i have about this and again this kind of goes back to you know this feeling like low budget and just you know not mm. really like the same as, as a regular movie is everything feels so bare like again i've worked in plenty of offices and i can tell like oh this is an office that you know people rent out for movies because it's so bare there's nothing on the walls there's like you Mm. know they put up like a quick whiteboard that they just write a bunch of businessy looking stuff down and then like yeah the the only people at the office christmas party it was like what four maybe five people like yeah it was like five people yeah this is like this this is a really good premise i like it and um but like you know you're gonna want to see a lot of like creative deaths and stuff so you you want to increase the bodies and uh, and after that first present, none of the other presents really, like, kill people. Like, yeah, the, it, there were weapons that the, they later used, but, like, yeah. I I mean, maybe this is a, a kind of a compliment in a way, but all this story makes me want to do is steal the idea and write a better version right. of it. <laughs> like, sure, yeah. You know, like, no. guess that's how I feel about it. Uh, and actually, I think the worst part about this story is the ending, because it just suddenly ends, like... It's, it's the, it, once, once it gets down to like, three people there's a weird plot twist where like someone like had like, the killer has footage of like two of the the office workers like having sex and that upsets some one of the other guys not because he's actually with the the, the you know the, the woman just because he's got a crush on her and yeah. then the other guy in the room assumes that he must be the, the one who let the killer in because he's got a vendetta because of the relationship that he's jealous <laughs> of and i'm like this is such a leap 
And then after like that guy dies, it basically just like the three of them who are left like all go towards each other, and it just cuts, and we hear like so, we hear like gunshots, and then we the, the one survivor is just walking out on their own, and that's the end of it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what that wasn't like a, a like you you just it's, like wasted the last like several yeah. deaths <laughs> and and like a oh what happened off camera moment and like like th- this is what it, I was I was looking forward to like things actually happening in this story, and it felt like after that first one. Not really a lot did. No, oh, it, it's really not satisfying at all. It, first of all, yeah, like the there needs to be like more deaths. Uh, second of all, everyone they turn on each other so quickly, and mm. it's like it it doesn't it's not believable at all. Especially when it's like little stuff where yeah, they show footage of like one of the guys being like, "Oh, we're gonna have to lay some people off." Like, "Oh, well, we should have fired like this guy." Like and, and that know, guy a couple Im- of months ago. Yeah, that guy immediately goes to like murdering so, him. Yeah, so, yeah, like. And obviously, like you would be pissed off about it, but given the circumstance, would he be like, "All right, let's not worry about that now. Maybe let's worry about uh, getting out of here alive." Like that—that that was so ridiculous to me. And then, uh, yeah, I, I guess was the twist at the end that it was the janitor because, like, they show like a guy with like a mop bucket or yeah. whatever, and he has like a gas mask. So. so it's like okay, but whatever. Like I, I, I don't know anything about these people, so that doesn't really have any impact or like. And surprise to me it could have been anyone it, f- it, it, we don't know what his motive is or the first douchebag who died uh like he, there was a gag at the start where he doesn't have a present because he forgot about this so he just yeah. like finds some stuff in a drawer and wraps it in paper with like tape as if that's not obvious or just last minute um yeah. and i thought okay they're setting this up for something it's like oh he can like you know yeah. someone who knows about this can open that and know it's safe later right or something Oh yeah, definitely. And they even like have like a shot of it yeah. where you're like, oh okay, that'll probably pop up somehow. And then it ends up just being opened by the, the survivor, and she kind of uses it as a murder weapon apparently because it's got blood on yeah. it. Like so it's like a it's like a ball that opens, and it's all bloody when she's walking away at the end, implying she bashed someone's head in with it. I'm like, that wasn't set up. Like she could have used anything yeah. for that. <laughs> there's no, yeah. There's no, there's no dramatic point to this. Like the whole thing where they're turning on each other. Like if this was feature length, right? And like I know we're into the movie. The, the killer reveal like something genuinely maybe suspicious about one of them and then they start to turn each other after like several people have died like then i'll buy that they're turning on each other that they're starting to get suspicious but yeah you know there's the whole story's only like 15 minutes long i find it hard to believe that you know it's, it's, a, it's a boring office like at the start and then yeah. <laughs> you know by, by the 10 minute mark they'll try to stab each other like nah <laughs> yeah or at, at the very least uh i mean <laughs> I, don't, I don't know like you could have said something where you know, if the killer's like, oh, I'm pumping, like, I don't know, hormones or, or testosterone gas or something into the room that's going to, I don't know, make you more violent or something. Sure. Like, even something like that could maybe give a little more weight. But, like, yeah, as is, it just feels like, uh, oh, I, I like where this was going, but it kind of felt like you, maybe you didn't really have a lot of uh, confidence in, in the premise or something yeah. that you just wanted to like wrap it up so quickly like it, it was a fun think, idea but it just yeah. yeah the execution and the progression of it was terrible the ending was garbage i i would say either yeah th- this could either be like a feature length movie in itself or you know if you maybe make this movie a little longer and then you know instead of having like five or whatever you know 10 15 minute stories maybe do like you know three you know a half hour 35 40 minute stories or something yeah i, I need more time i needed to, to actually th- it felt like someone had a premise but didn't really work on a script that much they just kind of yeah. threw down the first things that kind of I mean, came to mind like gen- genuinely it's kind of like you know uh saw but in an office which is you know not the worst premise yeah, in the well, world <laughs> the, the, the part the part of saw where it's the the, the idea of someone's playing games with like victims yeah. that part's fine there's nothing wrong with that premise in fact i like that yeah. and making it about christmas presents yeah that's fun do a christmas version yeah, of that yeah that's, that, that works and and honestly there was like a ton of presents on that table and they probably opened like what four yeah i want to see more <laughs> traps like what, what, yeah. what was in box number four come on yeah exactly get to it uh, all right, so that is that's the first story, and all that really happens between the stories is that like we have this woman on stage that comes out and like swaps the title card, so we see the title of the next one, uh, and that's uh, outside of one intermission yeah. where they have like a, yeah. a brief scene in the, the lobby. Yeah, and and real quick, uh, just something I I found annoying with the you know the whole premise of of this mm-hmm. wraparound is like you know it, it's kind of weird. It's like okay, so are these supposed to be true stories or like how much are they like? 
you know, seeing what, like, what's on stage, you know, that's being, like, acted out versus, you know, what's actually happening in these stories. Because when I'm... they cut back to the stage stuff, it seems so minuscule and interpretive. It's like, you couldn't get that story from what yeah, these people were doing. Just, they'll, they'll have, they have a couple of, like, black boxes, and that's all they're using for the props. Yeah. It's like, that's basically <laughs> all they're doing. Um, and it doesn't seem like they're ever really talking. Or well, I thought that at first as well, but at the, at the end, you see them talking for the final thing. So I assume they true. were doing dialogue throughout the whole thing. We just never saw any of it. I heard Maybe. about it, I suppose. Yeah. It's more accurate. But uh, the second story, so correct me if I get this, the order wrong here, but I think the second okay. one is the parking lot uh, uh, yeah. one, right? So we have a guy who's Christmas Eve, he's on, he's on his ho- way home uh, to his family, his wife, uh, his parents are over for Christmas, all that, they're making dinner. And he, like an idiot, locks himself out of his car. <laughs> and I, I was like, this was so frustrating to watch because he, he like closes his back door so lightly that the door is obviously not closed. And I was like screaming at him, like, close your stupid door. And then, yeah, when he gets in and like puts the keys in and the phone down and notices a door is like, uh, un- you know, not closed. I, I was like, oh, you're going to lock yourself in, you idiot. It was, it was very frustrating to watch. Yeah, so he gets locked out, and there's no one else around except one van, and he goes over to this van and asks if they can use his phone, or use, use their phone. And there's two ladies who are in the van, and one's kind of like standoffish, but the other one's like, yeah, sure, you can use our phone. And he, he calls the you know the, the car company, and then he calls uh, his wife to let her know that, you know, hey, I've been I've been locked out, I'm here, it'll take a couple hours or whatever, and that's fine. But so the whole thing is that there's something kind of creepy in the van that he thinks he sees at one point, he thinks he sees a creepy hand or, or whatever, um, and the whole story is that they were looking for someone because we find out in the phone call when he's confirming his details that his Christ- his birthday is Christmas Day. He was born on the twenty fifth, mm-hmm. and the the plot twist of this one is that the two girls are looking for someone with that birthday because they also have that birthday because they want to do a ritual on him that ties him to this demon that they've got in their van because someone with the the birthday of of Christmas Day are the only people who are eligible to be the the, the demon's demon's guardian. And if they go more than 20 feet away from the demon, the demon will kill them and the whole family. So now he's tied to this thing. and Because one of the girls d- runs away too early before the ritual is done and she gets killed. But then the other one completes it and she's like, I'm sorry, I'll drop your presents off at home, but you're stuck to this demon until you find someone whose who's birthday is on Christmas Day. And notably does not tell him how to do the ritual to like free no. himself. Uh, no. But he's left there with the demon and that's the whole, whole story. So... Here's the thing. I, I I feel like I'm a little split on this because all this stuff with the guy locking the keys out of mm-hmm. yeah out of his car and his birthday and blah blah blah. I all that is stupid. And I was trying to think the whole time, like, all right, so have they been stalking this guy, or is this all random? Because like, you know, what a freaking coincidence, <laughs> you know, that uh, that would all happen. But I actually do love the idea of like a demon trapped in a van and you know (laughs) like like and the idea of someone like i think this actually could have been a total movie like you start off with maybe like maybe a guy runs into the van and they get into an accident and then the person driving like has to transfer you know this demon to this guy and then yeah figuring out the rules like how far you can go like how you know like a (laughs) You know, how you just kind of have to live in this van with this thing and stuff. I think all that stuff is really interesting. But, yeah, just in the story itself that's presented here, it's really not uh, it's too rushed. that good. It's too <laughs> yeah. rushed. Just, I, I was okay with the idea of him, him on his own. He can't get in his car. I'm like, okay, this is kind of creepy. What are we doing with this? Uh, but the, the, the revelations, again, they come too quick. Because I, I thought at first the whole thing was that, you know, he's married. He kind of, like, refuses to, like, accept a drink or go in the van with them. And I thought the whole point of the story was going to be about temptation. You know, these two young younger women who, and he's married, and you know, are they I trying to entice him, kind of thing? Yeah, like, I thought they might be in some type of cult or something because yeah. they have like tattoos and and stuff. So I thought I thought it was going down that path, and it wasn't. It was just they wanted to you know entice him, but only to you know quickly do this yeah. so they could get away. <laughs> and I don't know. It just, it just felt too rushed to really have any I don't know, weight to it. Like you know, it finished. I no, guess exactly, I was like, yeah. okay, I guess that was the plot. Okay, sure. Yeah, I was like, again, like, you know, I think it's kind of complimentary that the fact that I thought, oh, this is like a cool idea. But yeah, it's just so rushed and you really don't get any like time to digest it. And even the guy itself, like, shouldn't he be asking like a billion questions? Like, you know, instead, he kind of just like looks exasperated. Like he's like, 
you're leaving me with this thanks a lot like go to hell like <laughs> it, it's like no like you'd be freaking out be like wait a minute like tell me more like how do i live <laughs> like what do i do can i see my family it's like uh, i feel like there's so much uh more he would do but say it's just kind of like Ugh, whatever yeah i thought you get the implication uh, the implication i think is that they live in the van because they can't really yeah. go any further and if they're going to, like, to a bathroom, they have to go to, like, a, like a, maybe a gas station, so they're right next to the bathroom, so they can go in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, then the third story, I think, was the, the driving, hitting the deer, right? Was that next? Uh, I forget if it was that one or the, the Christmas Carol one. And I don't remember. Oh, it's a Christmas Carol. Well, I don't even know what you mean by that. But the, uh, like, the guy gets visited by, like, Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Christmas Carol. For some reason, I just thought you meant as in someone was saying Christmas Carols, and I was like, I don't know. Oh, no, sorry. This. Yeah, <laughs> as, as in the story of the Christmas Carol, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, we'll go with the deer one first, just for the okay. sake of it. This will be quick, because there's not a lot to this one. The <laughs> no. guy's driving, he's a photographer, he's sort of looking at his photos of one of the, you know, an attractive lady. He has a deer. He, the deer's, like, dying, but not quite dead, so he hits it with a rock to put it out of his misery. Then he goes home and one of his models is there and kind of flirts with them and she wants to see the photos that he took of her. And then the deer shows up at the house and impales him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> well, obviously the big thing is that these are the like Santa's reindeer. Sure, yeah, it's Blitzen. Uh, yeah. He hit Blitzen, yes. So I actually, I think like the idea of hitting one of Santa's reindeer is pretty funny and then having the like a uh having the bad guy be a reindeer i actually think like oh that's great i love that idea again this is just not <laughs> executed as well like this could have been like a really you know especially like in terms of humor this could have been like a you know a much funnier one like you're know, running mm. around trying to escape <laughs> a, a crazy no, like it, it, you keep getting those these pov shots of the, yeah. the the reindeer um and it's like you know it's like predator vision or something like that yeah <laughs> where they're coming after him and it was just like like, oh, I get it. I think the problem is, is when they revealed that he hit Blitzen, you know, when you see the collar at the end when he has a little flashback, I was like, yeah. okay. And again, I, I, we keep saying this, okay, that's a nice idea, but yeah. <laughs> that story's boring to watch. There's nothing about it that's interesting or exciting. Or Yeah, and I like it. I don't know, it could have been cool to see, like, you know, even if it's like a really crappy, like, puppety deer, like, seeing it run around and said the POV shots are not interesting, and yeah, then you get, like, the little bit of it stabbing the person, but it is, like, very obvious that they're just kind of holding it against yeah. their chest um and then and, and also again one of those things where it's like all right why is he a photographer why is he with this model like it seems like i don't know that there should be a point to it but i mean it, yeah <laughs> and they try to do like a a tales from the crypt kind of thing he's distracted by a lust and therefore he's you know needs come up and yeah like i like was that why he hit the deer because he was like looking at his yeah know, pictures in the car but like it seems like such a stretch like why couldn't it just be like a jerky asshole that was looking at his phone and not paying attention like yeah it seems like it'd be so much easier and you would actually get more out of the character instead of it's like all right he's a photographer but i don't really know if he's like a bad guy or something like i don't know yeah it doesn't do much enough with it moving yeah. on uh next one uh was the <laughs> christmas carol one which was basically this guy who's a bit grinchy but this is the thing, he's not even that grinch. He's, he's only grinchy in that he doesn't want to celebrate Christmas. He doesn't actually give anyone else shit for doing it. <laughs> yeah, like, he like he, he, de he definitely seems like a jerk, and, like, he uh, like he seems to mess with his neighbor, but to be fair, his neighbor seems, like, pretty annoying. <laughs> like, yeah, his, his neighbor's kind of like an annoying Ned Flanders type who's like constantly pissed yeah. for him to get involved with Christmas, and he's kind of a dick to him for that. But, like, other than that, he's just kind of, you know, he gets a call from his girlfriend who's with her family. She's like, hey, you know what? Come over and celebrate. He's like, nah, not really, but, you know, we can hang out later. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, okay, fine. Like, there's nothing. I mean, he's a bit of a boring dude, but there's nothing to really, like, hate him for. So, yeah. when he like, starts he, having. He, he like, seems like a loser. Like, I, yeah. I I think the girl should definitely dump him because he seems like a, kind of a jerk. But, like, yeah, he, again, he's not, like, the worst person in the world. He's not Ebenezer Scrooge or anything. Well, exactly. That's the point. <laughs> the point yeah. i'm making uh, but so he starts having like visions of himself and like you know it's, it's almost like poltergeist activity starts happening around the house where he sees himself being killed or committing suicide and all it really is is that it, it, it amounts to him like you know eventually the neighbor comes over for real again and he, he, he this time he hands him the money for for he, the neighbor's daughter's like you know charity thing or whatever it is and he's yeah. like no merry christmas everyone 
And the only interesting part of the whole thing is the fact that like one of the old movies and TV starts talking to him for a little bit. That, that was interesting. Yeah, yeah that, that was a neat little touch. But like again, I, I got to the end of this and I'm like, yeah, like you, you didn't make him that much of a Scrooge to make me care about the fact that he's been he's you know he's been taught the value of Christmas. If anything, it yeah. doesn't because it doesn't even like explain to us why why it's important. It's all about just no, torture. It it's, it's just torturing him. It's torturing him with yeah. like murder things. It's, it's not like saying, "Hey, this is this is why Christmas is important and why you should be a part of it." It's just no, no, no. We we are vindictive as spirits, so we're just going yeah. to or, or death himself, whoever it is. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah, it, it's really strange because it seems like it's trying to do Christmas Carol because it has like these three ghosts, but then it, like the it, it does like a flashback to him as a kid, but like the point in like the Christmas Carol, it's uh. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it's like, oh, they show him as a kid and they show him kind of being like, oh, see, like, you know, how, like, how much more carefree and, like, how happy you are as a kid or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, like, with this, it was like, oh, no, like, your childhood sucks. Like, it, you know, you were, like, a baby and, like, your parents were, like, and your dad was an alcoholic that just wanted to go to a bar and your grandparents, like, weird and creepy. And then they do this really <laughs> dumb thing I don't like where they have the flashback where it's, like, the same actor but he's like kind of you know dressed in like baby clothes but yeah. he's doing like his baby lines and <laughs> i really don't like that yeah, he's, he's playing his own grandfather and i think his girlfriend was playing his grandmother i think that was the same actress oh okay uh, oh okay that makes sense she had like yeah. a wig on and stuff she looked different but i think it was her yeah yeah it was it was stupid i, I don't really get the point and uh, i actually think like you said the the tv stuff was the most interesting it was like um He's trying to change the channel, but they're all just playing like the same Christmas movie, and mm. like that should have been the story. It should have been like Christmas invading, you know, this Grinch, and like, yeah, you can have like, oh, the TV only plays like Christmas music, and I don't know, his food is turned into like, you know, milk and cookies or stuff, or like these Christmas decorations are trying to get, like, do like more stuff like that. That could have been interesting. I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> so the last story was probably the, the, the other most interesting one in terms of the idea. Um. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I, I thought obviously the point of the Scrooge one was that Christmas is invading him. And until it got to full on Scrooge, I thought that that was the point is that it was actually not meant to be like he's the villain. It's that, no, if you if you want to get away from Christmas, you can't escape it because everyone shoves yeah. it down your throat. I thought that was really the point of that. And this, this is kind of what I thought this one was going to be as well and ended up not kind of being. Uh, so... So we have this guy who it's Christmas Eve and he's 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 getting chains out in a gun and he's 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 locking up for the night and he tells his friend uh, this is the constant spook character that she can't come over and celebrate Christmas or he doesn't want to go out and celebrate Christmas, but then she shows up with like the, the two or three friends. Uh, and... Wait, first quick oh. question: uh, Were they supposed to just be friends or were they supposed to be a couple? I thought they were a couple. Okay. Never really. <laughs> I don't think it matters, but I think there were a couple. Yeah, no, was, again, it was just like something that I was like, I feel like this could be clearer, but I don't know. It uh, felt weird. The way they were hugging at the end felt couple to me. Yeah, but in the beginning, it doesn't. Like, in the beginning, it just feels like friends being like, oh, like, we're going to come cheer you up because you're alone on Christmas. Like, it, it doesn't, you know, seem yeah. like a boyfriend-girlfriend thing. But then by the end, it, yeah, it seems like they are a little lovey dovey. So I think I, I assumed know. there were a couple because I think it was two other people who were a couple. So it was like... yeah. You know, couple, two, two, two couples. I don't know. Anyway, but so she shows up and he's like, no, you shouldn't have came tonight. This is bad. Like, you know, and he tries to take her aside and say, hey, like 10 years ago, this thing started happening. So this is why I don't celebrate Christmas and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then she goes outside and she ends up waking up and everything's turned black and white. And the, the aspect ratio changes. It changes to four by three. Is that like supposed to be like a sitcom or TV ratio thing? Uh, well, it's the old TV ratio, but it's also old movie okay. ratio. Like, movies up until the 50s oh, okay. are also 4 by 3 uh, So it's just, like, classic movie uh, ratio. And sh she comes in, and all the other people are acting really robotic and weird and want to, like, sit down and have Christmas dinner. And her boyfriend, the main character, is the only one who's, like, acting normal as well. So he's like, no, see, I told you this is why I shouldn't have came over. And she tries to leave, like, multiple times, and she just, like, keeps reappearing back in the room. And... The implication, because she was seeing some weird stars, like, in the sky, like, before she fell asleep. The implication is that there's these aliens who come down to, to her boyfriend every year, and have done for the last ten years, just so they can celebrate Christmas. And then, the moral of the story is that she realises the reason why they're doing this is because, just like her, yeah. she didn't get to have nice Christmases growing up. So the <laughs> aliens want to celebrate Christmas with them, because they didn't get to have that like everyone on Earth does. So... 
she uh well i say everyone not everyone celebrates christmas but you, you know what i meant all right uh, yeah. but she uh so she because she's really mad at first because they give her this doll that she wanted as a kid and then she explains that she wanted this doll and her parents were horrible about christmas and didn't believe in christmas and didn't want to celebrate mm-hmm. it and then she's like it's kind of heartwarming and then you know everything goes back to normal and they kind of like hug by the christmas tree and like yeah, maybe you shouldn't treat this as a burden with the gun and the chains and stuff <laughs> because it's just aliens want to celebrate Christmas with you. That's all it is. Well, there's, <laughs> this is probably the most interesting, but it, it definitely had a lot of stuff about it that drove me crazy. Well, First of all, again, the, like when it switched aspect ratio went black and white, I thought, okay, this is interesting what's happening here. This is a bit more psychological. But again, yeah. the execution just kind of ultimately felt rushed and kind of like it went nowhere like for, first of all like i'm not sure what the chains are supposed to do yeah because at first like, i thought it was like a werewolf or something and he was yeah, chaining himself I think, up yeah that's my exact thought like yeah. oh okay uh well, there's a full moon on christmas this year so like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh and also that was another thing that seemed kind of weird is it seemed like all of a sudden he was like oh no i, I can't we can't do anything tonight where it's like well no if this has been happening for the last 10 years like you know like they should it, it should be more of a thing like oh like you never want to spend christmas with us why won't you tell us like what you do on christmas or something instead yeah. it just seemed like it was like or, oh or, this is just coming up now or more likely he would have like more of a a, a proper like he like he would set up that every year he goes somewhere for christmas for a week yeah so that so that no one would question it no one would ever like try and like just show up on christmas eve but here it feels like yeah. he's just told him that morning oh by the way i don't do it for christmas <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that would actually make a lot more sense just to be like oh no i'm going home to visit some family yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or something or whatever uh now, the other thing that drove me crazy is yeah like the guy uh you know and even uh you know constance Wu's character like uh, you know, after a while she you know she's like a little she's angry and stuff about it and you know he shoots the aliens in the head and stuff and i'm like why are you like so mad like they just want to spend christmas like they're actually pretty nice like <laughs> Yeah, they're kind of creepy, but yeah, he treats it very hostile, where it seemingly every year when they show up, he just starts shooting them and, like, you know, try to take yeah. them out and, like, whatever. <laughs> and it's almost like by the end of this story, he realizes like, with her that, no, they just want to celebrate Christmas and get what it feels like. And he, yeah. for some reason, he's, they've chosen him as his Christmas buddy. So yeah. <laughs> so here we are. So the implication I get is at the end is that every year now, like, they're just going to ex- like, welcome them as a, as a pair. Like, here, you're coming yeah. have Christmas with us. Yeah, why? Why the hell not? Like, oh, like yeah, you get some like yeah. free food and presents. Like, <laughs> they're probably gonna be weird, but also <laughs> like, uh, you know, just the chance though to hang out with aliens and stuff. Like, can you act like you know that? Like that is kind of interesting and not this like, oh god, I gotta go like hanging off aliens again. Like, I would kill for that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be fine if it was the first time it happened, so they'd naturally be scared. But the way he's preparing with the guns and chains implies that every year he tackles this like he's rambo when yeah. <laughs> really all they want to do is be pleasant like you'd be creeped out the yeah. first time it happens and they show up and whatever but yeah, yeah i don't know and, then, weird. and another thing that drives me crazy and i guess it's kind of a recurring theme throughout the movies where i, I just feel like people aren't giving the proper reactions they should to a lot mm. of this stuff where of course constance Wu does the thing where she's like all right guys funny joke but all right you know joke's over and it's like you're in like a weird black and white environment <laughs> where you're you're like walking through doorways and coming out like right back where you came in which is impossible like you would i think you'd be a little bit more like what the hell is going on instead of like okay guys what a joke yeah uh, yeah so th- that was the last one and then the wraparound ends with like there's an intermission at one point where they have a scene where the guy has to go to the toilet and that's just kind of all it is but He's getting kind of ill looking throughout the last couple of stories and then he goes back to the toilet at the end and then the weird thing happens where the performing artists start to perform their night. So they, they do the same dialogue that they had at the start of the movie and then the intermission and then they kind of, and I thought this was a, again a, a nice idea that they start doing the yeah. dial, the phone call that he's having in the bathroom. We get to hear that because they're performing it and it it's him saying that he can't help it, he has to feed, impl- implying that he's some kind of demon or monster or something yeah. that he's going to eat yeah. her. And, like, I think, uh, like, a couple of times earlier in the movie, when they cut back to him, he would have, like, kind of these, like, stomach noises, which I guess... I, I, it was hard to tell at first what they were, because I wasn't sure if they were hungry sounds or, like, you know, upset stomach just, sounds. My whatever, problem but... with this is it just feels so random. Like, 
nothing in the movie other than the fact that he's been hungry i guess yeah is actually hinted that there's anything going on here that it's to do with him like why isn't it that because you, you've set up that this place is kind of weird that the stories are, are yeah. kind of like bizarre and if you're doing this thing here where the story is actually telling the story of them as if there's something like supernatural about this place then you're telling me that there's also him being like a monster or something like it, if, if you try to do more with it and said that okay this place is actually trying to warn her like this place is actually looking out yeah. for her by like warning her about this guy yeah cool, which, do something is- with that yeah, and then, like, was the implication that he was like a vampire or something? Because like they do like a quick shot where his like you know face gets all like messed up, and you know he's saying he needs to feed and stuff. So uh, um, I wasn't I, getting vampire. Also, I find it hard okay. to like the vampire's stomach rumble when I've not had blood for a while. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe I just got sort of like I don't know person eating demon kind of thing yeah. is what I was getting. But I mean, you, you, then, could, you could argue it. And there's there's like an old creepy guy that's been looking, you know, at him throughout the movie, and then once all this happened, specifically her, he's been sort of staring yeah. at her throughout the movie, and then at the end, after like she has this little scare where he doesn't actually do anything, like she has this little scare, and then he, like, he seemingly he's back to normal, and yeah. like like that's a big thing. Like if you're gonna make a, a big deal about him, you know, being hungry and oh having to feed, all right, there's something definitely weird or you know not normal about this guy. But then yeah, it's like they don't go to the conclusion of it where, you know, if he's saying that he has to feed and he has like this messed up monster face, then why not end with him turning into a monster and trying to eat her? Like, you know, instead it's just kind of like, Oh wait, was that in her head or is he yeah. actually going like, to Is there actually a real danger here or is, or yeah. like did that conversation, was that thing they just did, just made up and it didn't actually matter. Yeah. Um, and then, cause the guy at the front, the old creepy guy just turns to the forward and laughs like hysterically. And then it cuts to black yeah. and that's the credits. And almost as if this is just a practical joke where they were intentionally eavesdropping <laughs> on them all, all, all night just so they could do yeah. this at the end to freak them out. And if that's it, then fine. But I feel like the movie doesn't set it up well enough to really pull no, this off. Like it, yeah, again, like, you know, not everything has to be, you know, someone doesn't have to turn to the camera and explain everything yeah, yeah, and say, yeah. hey, this is what's happening. But at the same time, I feel like I shouldn't have this many questions about what's going on. Like, it just, it felt... I, I think tonally it felt like it wasn't like really if if it had like a tone that felt like it was in this creepy vibe where I was getting like okay this is kind of an ambiguous movie where it's doing these things but instead it felt just kind of neutral the whole time so yeah. this ending came off just as really kind of weird and like again it felt like some sort of shouldn't filmmaker thought they had a really like witty ending that <laughs> like was mysterious yeah. and it just kind of comes off as I don't know underwhelming yeah so I, I think that's a yeah good word for it is uh again like i I was you know i wasn't like super excited i didn't think it was going to be the best movie of the year but i was you know like i had like a genuine interest in it and if that's how i describe it i describe it as aggressively underwhelming yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah and like uh i mean there was you know some stuff i liked about it but overall it was um yeah it, it wasn't great uh i would I would probably give it a mild recommend, like just like if you're really in the need for like Christmas horror and like, you know, you've already watched the kind of, you know, like the couple of main staples, you know, your Black Christmases, your Silent Night, Deadly Nights, you know, even something like Krampus or whatever. If you want something new, you know, uh, like it's on sh- and you have Shutter, you can watch it for free. I, I'd recommend it. But yeah, other than that, I really wouldn't uh, you know, have people go out of their way too much to see it. Mm. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I wouldn't. But <laughs> I, I, I props for getting our, our the title of our channel in there, though. You give it a mild recommend, mild because oh, so, okay. we're mild fuzz. <laughs> yeah, uh, so no. Uh, so what are you rating it, Timmy? Uh, I think um, mm, I, I mean, I, I think I'm gonna be like slightly positive it's not going to be a great score but i think i'm gonna give it like a 4.5 and it's mostly uh i, I think for the ideas because uh yeah like in, in general like i liked a lot of the ideas it was just there wasn't that much execution to back it up but the you know like the like the acting and stuff was fine you know music was you know, it was okay like it was just yeah mostly the execution stuff that didn't work for me you always seem to really want to justify your scores thinking that i'm going to think you're being <laughs> extreme but like no i believe it at four so it's not like you're, you're not 
Well, no, I just, yeah. But when you said, I'm going to give it a not to such a bad score, I thought you were going to come out with like a six. And I was like, what, really? <laughs> but. Well, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe, especially lately, we've been giving out like some like ones and twos and stuff. So I don't know. Like four se- still that's, seems like mildly high sometimes. <laughs> what you're saying is we've had a rough, uh, rough period, a rough patch. For, yeah. Yes. For a bit, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, and catching up on some 2018 movies in January before we do our, our top tens and, and whatnot does not have me convinced of seeing you know classics <laughs> popping up. Uh, it'll probably, probably yeah. be February because we're we're doing the rest of the movie awards at the end of February, uh, when, okay. r- roughly when the Oscars are happening. So we'll probably do it then. That, that gives oh, us two okay. months. I, I think the reason for that is because typically in February, stuff from mm-hmm. like November, December will be going out in VOD and stuff. So it's like the you know everything will be available. Thanks to, to a yeah. point. So. Um, and then this year, after hear Tim's complaints about, oh, well, we'll count this count this year because it's too late to put it in last year's top ten. Like, no, tough. It's well, uh, I mean, I'm sorry if I want my list to be accurate, but <laughs> ho 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 because it's Christmas. Uh, uh, so no, that that is uh, all the creatures were stirring. Uh, so uh, that that wraps up the, our second Christmas movie. Uh, we actually we had three last year. We only had two this year. Um, not that there was less episodes in general, but we just started doing Christmas movies a week earlier for some reason. Uh, hmm. That's fine. Maybe we'll do three next year. I don't know. Yeah. There's definitely a... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you off air, but there were some... Uh, yeah, that, some good ideas I have for next oh. year. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm excited now. I'm not <laughs> afraid. Uh, but yeah, so that, that has been Screws After Midnight. Uh, this is not the last episode of the year, though. We do have a New Year's movie planned for next week, so you can look <laughs> forward to that. Uh, so you can check out that. Get us on patreon.com slash TV if you want to support uh, the show and the channel and everything we do here. Uh, get some stuff early, get access to voting every month. Uh, something we're going to do actually when we get to get to our top 10s and stuff in February is all patrons at the $1 tier and up will be able to vote themselves and we'll reveal those results um, wow. all, along with our top 10s and stuff. I know, it's exciting, right? <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> Uh, so look forward to, to that. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff. That helps with YouTube's like, you know, uh, algorithms and pimping us out to people and that kind of thing. Uh, but that is that is us. So thank you once again. Get us on Twitter at Screams Midnight. And uh, that is it. So thank you very much once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies. Have a Merry Christmas. And we'll see you yes. next time.